My man came back to where he was trapped. Another replica. Like the one they made for Ordinary. He's right there. I wonder what happened here. Oh, you don't want to know, Jesse? Ten years ago, Jesse would have been... 18, I think? I think she's 28 right now. I don't know what I pressed. Something happened. This is the director. I need a ranger at this location immediately. Nice to see a director out in the field. I've always been out in the field. I don't know what I'm looking at. Alice Wake interview. The catalyst for everything going wrong. And it makes sense because, you know, Alice being near, Hartman sensing it, Alice having been in the dark place before, and that's what Alan's been trying to do the whole time too. Make the story make sense. Compiled by Derek Shaw and Caroline Dempsey, two people that died already. Interview, Alice Wake. After reaching out to the Bureau, Alice Wake was brought into the oldest house for an interview on mm, 2017. Two years ago? Hmm. Not recently. The interview conducted by agents Shaw and Dempsey revealed that Mrs. Wake has had reoccurring nightly visitations from her missing ex-husband in her New York apartment. Oh, speaking of which, aren't we also in New York right now? That's where Alice and Alan live too. Mr. Wake appears out of nowhere and rushes at her down the corridor. According to her impression, he appears crazy and horrifying, clearly coming at her with violent intent. Mrs. Wake believes that he is haunting her, insisting he is not Alan but a fucking monster in his body. Mr. Scratch? Mrs. Wake has not been sleeping out of the fear of these visits. Her attempts to keep the lights on through the night result in the relevant hallway's light bulb breaking every night, possibly indicating the involvement of the mm. Further investigation required. We propose installing and monitoring equipment in the apartment. Copies of supply requests blah 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 have been sent to Mr. Kirkland and administration for approval. The lights breaking every night. Home. Oh. How did Alice Wake get into contact with the Bureau anyway? She went to her local police station and then somehow someone hooked her up? We don't really know, but you know, that's something that Alan's gotta think about. He's gotta make it all make sense. This is the final room. How do we get the lights on? Stay stretched. Stay stretched. Over there. You, my guy, just stick around me. These are the notes of Dr. Emil Hartman. I am continuing my work alone again since certain parties are too blind to recognize a golden opportunity. Despite my generous offers, the conversations came to naught. Some people simply do not value collaboration as I do. Though I believe now that it was for the best. The sort of bold pioneering work that I am undertaking cannot thrive under the shackles of bureaucracy and regulation. I have a history of seeking such partnerships. There was a time when I had hoped Alan Wake and I could collaborate. Collaborate. We could have produced art such that the world has never seen. But Wake was stubborn, egotistical. Writers usually are. Disappointing nonetheless. Now, like Tom before him, Wake has disappeared into Cauldron Lake. And this is where my work turns. Since he was lost to the lake, Thomas Zane has been observed by various townspeople. This indicates to me that the individuals within the lake are not entirely gone. I anticipate Wake will similarly return one day. While I may harbor some resentment for the man, his raw talent and determination are undeniable. From this, I have concluded Dr. that the lake and the dark place within it are not as removed from this world as I previously thought. Given my acute awareness of what awaits within, my meticulous preparations <laughs> and my considerable education, <laughs> I believe myself much more prepared than either Tom or Wake. 
I should be able to cross into that dark realm with the chance to return as they have. All that remains is the dive itself. It frightens me, I admit, but such is the burden of the truth seeker. I will take my plunge into the dark tomorrow with only the light of knowledge to guide me. It is time for a breakthrough. Until I return. If anything, out of Thomas Zane, Alan Wake, and Emil Hartman, you're the one that's not coming back. My considerable education, he says. Okay, we gotta get over there. Let's go! We're good, we're good. This is fine. Right Falls Summary. Read this later. Oh, the ranger sees him. I need to find another power core. By the way, you know how before I was thinking... Oh, it's right here. I was thinking, hey, how come Thomas Zane looks so much younger than Alan Wake? And I think I might have a theory. Because you know how when Thomas Zane got trapped, it was in the 70s, right? And maybe when you're in the dark place, time doesn't really continue properly anymore. So Thomas Zane's been looking like that since the 70s. But then, would Alan have aged? I don't know. Uh, with the improving graphics over the years, I can't really tell if Alan has aged that much or not. Okay, let's put that on hold. Uh, what now, what now? Is there any other place I can go to, or...? The lodge is right here. We're standing in the lodge right now. But I don't see another power core. Where is it? Are there more? I don't see any more. Maybe we gotta walk over. Stop that, please. Yo, that was not good. I'm already at half health. But I don't see another core. Where could they be? Did the guy die? He's okay. I gotta keep walking around and see if I can... Oh, it's right here. That's it. Oh, that's all we had to do. Don't be rude. I want some help, if that's okay. Whoa! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! No teleportation, no grabbing, not before a dinner and a date plays. Oh my god! Come on! Oh no! Of course it wouldn't be that easy. But now he's in the dark again. Help me! Thanks. Thanks. So we gotta do the same thing now. Okay, I got you. I got you. That one also needs to be fixed. Where is the core? Where is the core? Can I also get some health over there? Yup. Become mine. Don't kill him, don't kill him. We can all be friends. I just need to figure out where that core is. It's over there. Here we go. No teleportation. Should grab a few more chairs. Oh! 
I wonder if we can go inside the lodge. That's what I'd really like to do later. Come on! Oh, Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But Investigations needs someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to sector heads, ma'am. No, thank you. Aren't you head of containment sector? Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown. There shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes recently. She's not dead? I thought she was in the list in the beginning, but maybe not. Things set in motion. If the alarm's true, then so is the reason for the alarm. The effect must follow the cause. It's happening again. A return. Oh! You have been warned. That's it, right? That's it, right? Alan Wake 2? Was that a confirmation? Basically, right? It's gotta have been. Or maybe even better. Oh my god, what if what if Control 2 and Alan Wake 2 are the same game? <gasps> oh my god, my mind would be blown. But that would be hard because as much as I'd love to see Alan again, it's important for Jesse to have her own story too. So these two people, I would love to see a continuation of both their stories, is all I can say. And very disappointingly. The Lodge! The Cauldron Lake Lodge is just cardboard. Oh, I thought we could go in. I guess they didn't have enough budget for building the whole thing again. Well, you can kind of look at it like this. Oh, yeah, I remember this vaguely. In Alan Wake, there was a door here, and then that was a door that we had to go through to escape. We had to use a Taken thing to break the door so that we can get out. Looks like they were still in the process of building it though. It's pretty... rudimentary. Is that it? It's happening again, and that was it. No, we're done! We are done. Case files, right, Bright Falls. 1976, that's the Thomas Zane time. An unconfirmed threshold manifestation occurred at Cauldron Lake, WA. The citizens of Bright Falls had gathered in the town's southwestern fields for the annual festival, known as Deerfest. Eyewitnesses all claimed that the day had been sunny, confirmed by the reviews of the area's weather reports. But then, with no warning, a thunderstorm appeared in the direction of the Anderson Farm, and a tornado rose from Cauldron Lake. The torrential rain that followed caused a flash flood. It was as if the day had turned to night, testimony from somebody. Frank Breaker, the sheriff of Bright Falls, formerly a bureau agent, see employee file blah, managed to guide the crowd to safety as the festival grounds were destroyed by the flood. The festival was cancelled, ending one day earlier. Lack of official bureau presence on the scene makes this event difficult to report as a confirmed AWE, though similarity to other known events in the Bright Falls area lend credence to the accounts of the townspeople. Hmm. I didn't know that when Thomas Zane fell into the lake, it was also around Deerfest. September 14-ish. So we had Thomas Zane, we had Alan Wake, and then... Dated a couple of years in the future. Very smart of Remedy to not give a concrete date just in case if things go wrong. <laughs> um, and Agent Estevez is gonna tell us if something's happening. I'm guessing this Agent Estevez is probably gonna be a character in whatever game is coming out next. It should be Alan Wake 2 though, right? They mentioned specifically Bright Falls. Huh. Well, isn't that exciting? Finally. Finally. 
after all these long years. Hmm, this DLC was really fun. Oh, you don't have to make it that fun for me. Go away. I was just gonna check around here to see if there was anything. That's all. I'm pretty sure we even did the side quests too, right? So this is pretty much it. Pretty much it. Really fun, although I feel like on the plot end, mm, it's a little bit light. I liked all of what I saw. As usual, reading documents in this game is so, so fun. But in comparison to the Foundation DLC, I thought the plot for this one was a little bit light. Basically, the whole time we were just chasing Hartman, and then we defeat him, and that was the main thing. But we got a confirmation about Alan Wake, so that's pretty nice. Hey! Oh. Okay. Oh, he still got me. Are we done? Oh my god, how many more are gonna come out? I just wanna get out of here. One thing that I really would've liked to see a bit more is, um, actually, maybe we should go back. Check up on Dylan and Emily. As soon as I can get rid of these guys. Ugh. Hold on. Whoa! Oh, and it seems like there are some documents around here, too. Good. We'll read them on in a sec. Holy god! You guys are throwing too much random stuff at me. Even the ranger is dead. Oh, no, he's over there. Are you all happy? No! Don't kill my guy! Oh, thank god. Yeah, let's look around here. We didn't really finish looking around yet. That was a tape, and there's a document that... Who knows where this was originally? Brightfall Supplement. On the day of the flooding, the rock band Old Gods of Asgard was rehearsing in a field outside the Anderson farm, the homestead of band members Odin and Thor Anderson. Both admitted to being in a heavy state of inebriation at the time, having spent days drinking their home-brewed moonshine while celebrating Deerfest. After the townspeople were evacuated from the flooded field, Sheriff Breaker was asked by Freya Anderson, of course, daughter of Thor Anderson, to check on her father and uncle. Breaker drove to the Anderson farm and found the band members alive, but in need of medical aid. Tor Anderson had been struck by lightning, and Odin Anderson had cut out his own right eye, a possible reference to Norse deities, Odin and Thor. They claimed they had fought and valiantly defeated a dark army of the Scratching Hag, rising from the Cauldron Lake. See AWE Blah of 1970, related to the suspected Maddiver's Isle. While impossible to verify, these events are relevant to the reoccurring AWE at Bright Falls and the Cauldron Lake, mm. Odin and Tor Anderson have been listed as persons of interest. And how are they doing right now? We don't know. Tor's daughter is named Freya, another Norse reference. But what's this one referring to? Um, I think earlier they mentioned that Bright Falls had three AWEs to date, right? 1970, 1976, and then Alan Wake, 2010-ish. So what's this time? Was it when Barbara Jagger drowned? Is that considered a different one? I'm not sure. This must be where they studied Hartman. Kinda looks like Dylan's cell. I wonder if they treated him as badly. Well, he knew stuff, so maybe not. This cell right here. Hmm. What was I gonna say just now? I can't remember. Lost my train of thought. What's over here? Wake evidence. Admission of evidence. 
a photograph of Alan Wake captured by Alice Wake during an event in her home. Alice Wake, former wife of Alan Wake, has recently been visited at night by her ex-husband or entity resembling him, see mm for more. Being a professional photographer, Mrs. Wake positioned cameras with motion sensors around the corridor he appears in and managed to capture an image of Mr. Wake on film. During an interview with Mrs. Lake, she mentioned that her favorite camera, a uh, model, was lost in 2010 during the AWE. No match has been found among the confiscated evidence from AWE 35. It has been filed as a potential altered item, and research staff stationed at Bright Falls are being contacted to check if they have any knowledge of such an item. A camera. Maybe this is gonna come up later too. Excuse me, my dude. Wake photograph. Oh my god. That... We saw that earlier in the motel. That's really scary. If it's an entity resembling Alan, then probably we would all think of Mr. Scratch. Yeah, who is, um... I'm trying to think if I should say it right now because it's an Alan Wake spoiler, but probably if you're here, you should, you should know about Alan Wake already, right? So the entity is a doppelganger of Alan Wake. But we don't really know anything about him besides that, so... I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, there isn't really that much more information. <sighs> oh, check this out, and hey! Hey! No, are you kidding me? Of all the things I can break and control, this isn't it? Oh! What? That's a reference to the collectibles in Alan Wake. The Lodge. Yes. Copy. Oh, they were trying to make it again. So they had to have photos and all. Bright Falls. Deerfest, the diner. Don't touch. The lake. I wonder if we can actually read the text. Because it seems like you can, vaguely. If I try to, like, really zoom in here. <laughs> no, not close enough. Actually, it kind of looks like it says September 14 here, which would be one day before Deerfest, right? But I don't think so. <laughs> That's crazy. The whole town. Bright Falls, WA. The lodge wouldn't be here. Oh, I kind of remember this map. Kind of. I remember the dock area. Yeah. I don't think they were going to rebuild the whole thing, though. Just a lodge. Is there a light over here? Nope. We didn't even use the elevator. We can now, but I mean. Now that was probably it, but we'll we'll have a leisurely stroll around here. Yeah, this DLC mostly felt like drumming up excitement for a continuation of Alan Wake. And I did really enjoy everything I saw here, but I do feel like the foundation DLC might have been a bit longer and I kind of wonder because I'm coming to this DLC straight after finishing Alan Wake again everything is still really fresh in my mind and I'm super excited and all that but if you come into this expansion without having any prior Alan Wake knowledge or investment then I worry that it would just feel like hey okay today we're fighting a guy named Hartman and we successfully defeated him the end plus there was some cutscene about a guy named Alan Wake and Thomas Zane but that guy never appeared again and what's really going on I don't really get it it's really cool how they weave these two stories together, but personally, I'd like to see more control content too, not just Alan Wake. There are still so many more places the control story can go. But maybe as Alan Wake says, the unsolved mysteries are the ones that stay with us the longest. Oh hey! Good thing I came down here, hold on. Night Spring Screenplay, page 4. The scientist turns from what used to be his director, now transform into a stranger. An alien that only resembles a director in form. He drops his all-important clipboard as he stumbles toward the closing portal, 
but the horrible entity is already rushing through it in a flow of insanity and chaos. The scientist becomes caught in it, and the entity devours him, screaming as it enters our world. The director lifts his pistol to his head. His hand is steady, sure in its finality. Or so I thought. Camera fades to black, a gunshot is heard. And so, our hunger for control, our obsession for domination and power, the hubris at play in this children's puppet show we're starring in can only lead to our fall from control, to submit to those who really hold the strings and control us. In Night Springs. The end. This part about the pistol obviously reminds me of Trench. Oh my god. There's no question about it, Alan Wake wrote Control. That's insane. And now we're trapped here. That was smart. What a sneaky little page. How sneaky. Okay, so let me just make a quick trip back to, say, Emily? Or maybe Dylan? Hi, Jesse. No, oh, there's nothing new. That's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, Emily didn't get any new lines at all. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. <laughs> Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. I'll never get sick of that. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I would have liked to see more of Emily in this DLC too. Trench is dead, along with Salvador and Tomasi. Marshall's missing. And then Dylan still has a head of hair, which wasn't like this until the DLCs. So he's still resting. Yeah, something like this kind of gives me the big impression that Control is gonna get some kind of a continuation. Because otherwise, Dylan's just gonna be like this for... ever? That doesn't seem right either. Oh! Oh! Hey, remember this room? This is a room where we have Take Control. So I was looking up if there's anything about this DLC that I should be looking at before I really finish off, and people were saying, hey, there's actually a hidden room in the room where the radio plays Take Control. And I was gonna come down here, and this is open already. I didn't do anything, it was already open. Is it supposed to be? Cause you know how usually for breakable walls we have a painting over it, right? But this one didn't have one, and I assume the hint was supposed to be this little crack over here. But it was already open before I even broke it. Yeah, whatever, let's go. A globe and a bunch of binders. Hmm. So you see we have a clock right here. I want to preface this by saying that I looked this all up. People smarter than me already figured it all out and there's no way in a million years I would have figured any of this out by myself. I know the code already. I'm gonna plug it in, see if it works, and then I'll explain how you're supposed to be able to get this code. These are obviously hours on a clock. Let's start with one. So when you hit the right spot, it does that dinging sound. Next one is seven. Next number is also seven. One. Six. And then four. Nine. And last but not least, seven.
Oh my god. I don't know how anybody was supposed to be able to figure this out, but this is even crazier than the Menekin Echoes. Okay, so the code is 177-16497. How you were supposed to be able to get this was by listening to Take Control in reverse. So it being on the radio in the previous room was supposed to be a hint. There is apparently a secret message where it says... This isn't 24 hour clock, so for any numbers over 12, minus 12, and that's how you're supposed to arrive at the code. Holy crap. It seems like when the game first came out, in the song, people already realized that there were hidden messages. I had no clue. That means that this was in planning for over a year then. Oh my goodness. There better be some crazy prizes down here, seriously. Nothing but a red room. That's not a good sign. <sighs> oh. You're here already? It's so red here. It's kind of scary. Not a good sign. There's gotta be something good if we get to the end of this room, right? Let's get some health back. Woo! Oh my god! Oh! I didn't even die to Hartman, and I died to these random lackeys. They're all level 9, so we have to be a bit careful. I can't be too off guard here. Especially because everyone's far away, and I want health. I want my health. Thank you. Maybe let's not even try bother seizing anybody. That seems to be easiest. It's so hissy here though, my god. Ah, oh, it's a big guy. It's a big guy. Good, good, good. That's it? It can't be. <gasps> Again? Hold on, let's have a look around. It looks like any other regular bureau location, but dang, the color is really... It's really unsettling. And the noise. Yes, I hear you. You don't have to try to freak me out, I'm already freaked out. Please. But no, it seems like this place is just a regular office. Although... Really, really red for some reason. Quit it! Stop. No, it's just an office. This is new. Oh, normal colors. Again? This time it's daytime. Take control again? Oh. Aerobics. Is that our prize? Aerobics. Did I miss it? Maybe it's a personal mod. Health recovery on evade. Oh, wow, that's actually really good, even though 
I don't really have a use for it anymore. <laughs> wow. Is that the only thing that we came here for? The Valhalla Nursing Home. Founded in 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson. For their twilight years. Oh! Who founded it? The Valhalla Nursing Home. Founded in 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson of the Old Gods of Asgard fame. For their twilight years. Built after the return comeback tour. Flip-flop to be their farewell tour. Cut short. Cancelled. To the chagrin of their agent, Barry Wheeler. Hey! Wheeler had managed to coax a couple of hit songs out of them before that. Balance Lays the Demon. A couple of others. Three massive stadium-sized gigs. The old men rocked like they were possessed by the devil. Like their namesakes. The backstage parties got out of hand. The air was thick with smoke. Wheeler squinted. His migraine flared. Booze and drugs. A rock and roll cliche. They ran off after every gig. Wheeler had security track them down to the craziest after parties. The Andersons were so old. Vampires. Princes of fucking darkness. After every gig and the rampaging party that followed, it took them weeks to bounce back. And they never did completely. Each time Wheeler expected them to croak, it was that bad. After the third gig, Wheeler couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't stomach the idea of another client dropping dead on him. Wheeler canceled. Called it off. It was over. After the Old Gods comeback tour was canceled, Wheeler set up a foundation with the money from the record sales of the Greatest Hits album and the gigs. A lot of money. Wheeler was good at his job. Wheeler set up the nursing home facility. The old men deserved it. Oh, wow. So Barry really did become the agents for Thor and Odin. Must have been making the big bucks then, huh? Squeeze a few hits out of them. I wonder if canonically, Take Control would be one of their songs then. Cause you know, those guys really have a similar voice to them. Now we're back out here. Oh look at that, look at this hole! It's so like, organic now, but when we first came here, it was like, really neatly cut out. Weird, weird. Anyway though, I never got to make this hole, it's just like this. That's a bit mysterious. Well, I'm back in my director's office after a long day of hard work. This should be the end, right? Oh my god, that clock looks a lot like the one that we just saw. Huh. Anyway, anyway. This is probably the end of my time with Control then. We did the main game, we did Foundations, we did AWE. And this game was really such a blast to play slash read through. Yeah, the combat and stuff was really satisfying, but for me, a lot of the meat and the fun really lied with reading all the weird documents and people losing their brains from going through metal detectors or having to put on shoes because their feet are gossiping or whatever. And uh, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it. There's nothing out there quite like it. And all I can hope is that Control 2 slash Alan Wake 2 slash whatever the heck Remedy is making next will come sooner rather than later. Thank you so much for joining me. This was Wellens with the Control AWE DLC, and I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing it. And I hope to see you all perhaps in the Bright Falls AWE a few years down the line. All right. Bye.